Biocon is in focus as well. Should pull up the stock price. Right now, the stock is under some pressure. Uh, 213 on the stock price currently. Espirito Santo recently has raised some questions on the accounting practices of Biocon, saying there's considerable confusion over the account treatment of drug milestone payments. Uh, Biocon, on the other hand, said the deferred revenues of uh, has about has deferred revenues of about 493 crores on their balance sheet. Accounting policy will lead to over-reporting of EPS in FI 13 to FI 15, as well as Preto Santo has to say on this. Cash stream of money is not reflecting in the EPS. Down, they've also downgraded the counter to a sell with a target price of 186 from the current price of about 213. That's still a significant downside. On the same very issue, caught up with Kiran Mazumdar Shaw of Biocon asking her these very questions about these accounting practices and what exactly uh, does Biocon have to say on these allegations that have been made. Uh, starting to, with the, the fact that they've been questioned on their accounting practices and this is what she had to say. I have understood how we have dealt with this uh, particular uh, uh, deal with Pfizer. It is very apparent that they seem to have treated it as a standard out licensing deal, which it is not. This is a development and licensing deal where Pfizer had clearly been it up into a development phase and a milestone phase. The milestone phase is not going to happen. The development phase is what we are now treating as deferred revenues, where we have been treating it the same way right from the time the deal was struck. We have explained this right from the very beginning. It's not that we have treated it any differently after the closure of the deal. And we continue to go down the development path as we are obligated to do. So I really believe that the uh, analyst has not understood the whole structure of this whole Pfizer deal. And he's jumping to conclusions without even understanding that we are absolutely in compliance with GAP. All right, absolutely in compliance. Ms. Shaw, I mean, aside of that, when you bought AxiCorp, you paid closer to about 30 million euros. Now that you've sold AxiCorp, it's about 40 million euros. Why such a high amount paid for buying back of the insulin business? If you could respond to this as well. Not at all. In fact, again, you need to understand how we have structured the whole AxiCorp deal. The AxiCorp deal had an element of cash and it had an element of IP value. Because all these programs have very intrinsic high in IP value. And this is what we disclose right up front. And we have, it has had no impact. It has been totally profit neutral. It is absolutely gap compliant. So I really believe that both in the AxiCorp and in the Pfizer deal, it has absolutely no impact on the bottom line. And this is what we are talking about. It has been treated in a very conservative manner. It is not about inflating any earnings. And I think the analyst is completely wrong in jumping to conclusions which he has done so without even evaluating what this whole deal structure was all about. Ms. Shah, aside of that, you know, when, you bro when you've broken the with Pfizer, you know, with uh, the upfront payment of $200 million, you know, why haven't you taken that all in one go and broken it up into different quarters? You know, I've already explained to you that the upfront payments that we, were, that we received from Pfizer were towards development. These are regulatory obligations that Biocom has to uh, conform to. And this is not, I think, as people would like to, uh, I think people need to understand. When you are developing programs, when you have to meet certain regulatory obligations, you cannot stop and start these obligations. These have to continue along a path. We have explained it right up front. Pfizer themselves expected us to go down that regulatory and the development path. Nothing has changed. We have stuck to that path. We have basically disclosed exactly how we were going to treat these uh, upfront payments right from the very beginning. Nothing has undergone change. It is absolutely gap compliant. And we have not deviated from the path at all. I think we are being very true to what we have said. Right. Uh, Ms. Shaw, getting that point, just moving away from that for a bit now, I mean, just, I mean, just come in on the business and how it's been panning out so far? 
Absolutely. I think, you know, the statin market is going to uh, change in terms of product mix. You're certainly going to see a torvastatin cannibalizing simvastatin and pravastatin. But as you know, Biocon is present in all statins, so we have a very strong and robust statin portfolio which we will pursue. Right. Ms. Shaw, aside of that, now that you have Exicorp, which is generally a low margin business for you, overall margin picture, does it improve significantly? You've seen our margins improve. I mean, AxiCorp uh, exit took place more than a year ago. And you, you have seen that our margins have increased, our EBITDAs have increased. And I think going forward, that is exactly what we want to focus on. We want to strengthen and increase and improve our margins. And that's what we're focusing on. We're actually looking at a very strong... Um, uh, you know, uh, reorientation of our product mix and hopefully as you go forward you will see our margins improve even further. Ms. Shaw, sure. uh, aside of that, you you know, let's come in on the Sinjin listing. You've been talking about that for a while now. Are the plans still on? You know, by when can we expect the IPO to hit the market? Uh, Sinjin is uh, our subsidiary research services company and we are, we are looking at listing this uh, company um, you know, over the next uh, 12 months, uh, which is what we are really looking at. Uh, hopefully the market conditions will be conducive for this listing and we are actually advised by our financial advisors who will really tell us which is the right time for us to list. Hmm. Lastly, Ms. Shaw, uh, you know, if you could also come in uh, in terms of your overall business performance for oral insulin and how it's been going. Well, oral insulin is a program that is pursuing development. As you know, we have to reorient our development plan. Uh, we are uh, in discussions with uh, a few uh, potential uh, development partners and as soon as we firm up on one of them, we will then pursue the onward development path because it's very important for us to be synchronized with what a development partner would like. Michelle, thanks a lot for that. The stock price, however, is low by about half an odd percent and sinking further, 213 on the price. Michelle clearly stating that they have not done anything wrong and they are clearly in every way gap compliant in terms of their reporting. Uh, that's Biocon for you, 213 on the stock price. Uh, the markets for themselves also slipping a little lower, right down about half an odd percent is, uh, since the start of the trading session. 48.40 on the Nifty, that's down 19 odd points and the Sensex for itself. Futures below 15,900. Right now, and uh, Sensex Cash at fifteen thousand nine sixty-two. Sean, uh, let's talk. Uh, you know, some politics now. Uh, Subramaniam Swami joins in.